According to the United Nations, by 2050, the world's population is expected to grow to 9.7 billion people. Feeding this number of humans will be a huge challenge. Currently, 38% of land is dedicated to growing crops and raising livestock. According to the World Wildlife Fund, agriculture is one of the most common causes of severe forest degradation. In 2015, scientists reported that the Earth had lost a third of its arable land over the previous 40 years. Um, we were told as farmers that, you know, just use these pesticides, use DDT, use glyphosate, if degradation continues at this rate, we may only have less than 60 years of topsoil left to grow crops. While modern agricultural techniques have improved production rates, the astounding percentage of land being used for agriculture will lead to major ecological challenges and biodiversity loss. The frequent use of chemicals in modern agriculture has also caused significant health issues in humans and animals. These chemicals that we've been spraying for years are affecting our own nervous system, affecting different systems in the body. And now we've seen uh, all these different diseases, you know, Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, Parkinson's, even in my own family. Added to these challenges is climate change, which disrupts seasonal weather patterns and devastates crop yields. As our cities expand, the distance between agricultural land and the large populations that consume its products increases thus increasing the negative impacts of transportation, like emissions. To tackle most of these challenges, vertical farming could be the answer. Vertical farming is an agricultural technique that is used to produce crops in a controlled environment. It stacks plants and crops vertically instead of growing them in rows like on a traditional farm. I can control the water, I can control the nutrients, the seeds I buy, I can control the environment. Yeah, it's just another product, just like compounding. Reports say that a 10-story vertical wheat farm could produce up to 1,940 tons of wheat per hectare, compared to a global average of 3.2 tons of wheat per hectare, resulting in 600 times more wheat. I could not believe how much food I could grow in a small space like that. I mean, we can grow 10 times more food in 90% less space. Isn't that incredible? Currently, the world is facing major food shortages, inequality of food distribution, and a lack of access to nutritious food. We realize that sustaining our own self requires us to grow our own food. Um, more people died in this world from starvation than COVID. Nobody should be dying of starvation in this world. Reports suggest that one out of nine people go hungry every day globally. That's almost 1 billion people who have too little food to lead a healthy and happy life. Another major issue related to agriculture is its water use. Agricultural practices account for approximately 70% of the world's water use. It is considered one of the most significant causes of depletion in our world's drinking water supplies. Without water, we don't survive. Our body, we need water. To grow food, we need water. So here in, in Phoenix, Arizona, this is a food desert. Without water, even the cactuses won't live. So as I decided to build a greenhouse, I need to use technology that would conserve as much water as possible. And the vertical uh, hydroponics system, aeroponics is what it's named, saves up to 98% of that water. Hydroponics is the most popular method for vertical farming because it does not require soil to grow the plants. The roots are suspended in a nutrient-rich watery solution to provide the plants with all the nutrients they need to grow. We only have one moving part, and that's a pump. That takes the water nutrients from the reservoir, and it pumps it up to the top, and you have a shower cap up there, and it rains down. So by cycling that pump on and off, we can actually cause three times faster growth. At True Garden, Troy has been using cocoa coir instead of soil. Cocoa coir is the fibrous, fatty part of the coconut that's been removed from the shell once it has been dried and processed. Once dried and processed, it becomes a soil-like medium. So coconut fiber is a, a byproduct, which makes this a very sustainable. So once we're done growing with that cocoa core, we can pull it apart and throw it in our garden, and it's a great for our garden. It holds like 10 times its weight in, in water. And then the coconut fiber itself repels bugs and less algae. Some of the best produce to grow vertically are lettuce, kale, chives, mint, basil, small herbs, cucumbers, and tomatoes. Some fruits like strawberries and red bell peppers are extremely sensitive to light and thus are a bit difficult to grow. Researchers at Arizona State University are working to solve this issue so that in the future, it will be easy to grow all fruits, vegetables, and grains vertically. 
To find out more about it, we visited Arizona State University's Polytechnic campus. Here, the plants are grown in watertight containers and are fed by an automated system that delivers the water and nutrients to them at the right time. We asked them about their ongoing research and what they are doing. Forest is using food waste fertilizer for growing crops. So in vertical farming companies, most of them using chemical fertilizer, which is not sustainable. So we try to use a fertilizer made from food waste so that we can make a circular food system. We detected food waste fertilizer include all macro and micro nutrients essential for plant growth and development. Second project is there we have some strawberry. Do you want to see? So here are some fruits. So vertical farm companies now, they can produce leafy vegetables profitably. So including lettuce and different types of herb. But the crop leaves are still limited. So we try to investigate in which way we can optimize the crop growth and yield in another crop. Because color of light affects all uh, stage of plant growth and development, including germination, seedling de development, pigmentation, and leaf size, plant height, flavor, or color of leaf. Sunlight has broader spectrum, between 200 to over 1,000 nanometers. But LED, they have very narrow range of the spectrum, so which means we can specifically choose which color of light or wavelengths of light we can use. Lights used to grow plants are generally LEDs because they require less energy than traditional lighting methods, such as indoor fluorescent fixtures. Plants mostly absorb red and blue lights because they are more sensitive to wavelengths in these colors. They do not absorb the green wavelengths of white light and instead reflect them back. Also, changing the color and intensity of the lights affects how the crop will grow. Just like the vertical farms at True Garden, all the factors are controlled and carefully monitored. And so we are measuring our light condition with lighting sensor. And also these are temperature sensors, so we monitor uh, air temperature, also humidity. The data produced with all the sensors are then carefully analyzed and used to optimize the growing process. Um, based on my understanding, is every 10 seconds we are collecting, you know, the light intensity, the temperature, the humidity. So that generates a large number of data for us. So right now, uh, application of artificial intelligence and we're seeing um, all those sensors, not only the, the, the software, but the hardware as well. We are able to uh, detect using the data, saying that when do we have to adjust the pH, when do we have to adjust the temperatures, when do we have to adjust any other parameters. Such studies allow for the efficient conversion of sunlight, food waste, and other energy sources into the vital resources needed by plants. The end result is much more than just an increased harvest of food. It's also a step in achieving sustainable prosperity. Most people think that farming vertically is difficult, expensive, and hard to maintain. But it's actually pretty simple, straightforward, cheap, and much more sustainable. Growing vertical farms at home is not just a trend, but is becoming more and more common as people want to eat healthier and save money. Even in your own house with lights, you can still grow typically the food you need with two to three towers. Or in the greenhouse, by going uh, nine feet tall, I can grow so much more food without having much of a production or cost with lights and or pump. So when you grow monthly, it costs about $3 Three to three fifty a month just to run a tower in your own house. Mm -hmm. Then you add the lights on, and you may be up to four to six dollars depending on what the cost of electricity is in your area. Heck, if you want to be a true off the grid, get a solar panel and an inverter and a battery, and you can easily do this. It is time to start living more sustainably in ways that allow us to have healthier food systems, better health, and a healthier world. The more we help each other, you know, communities band together and and start their own little vertical farm, or even have one or two towers in their own house and sustain themselves. Plants that can only be grown in a certain climate can also be grown inside. Like bananas can be grown in freezing Alaska and watermelons can be grown in the hot Phoenix desert. Building new facilities can turn wastelands into agricultural zones for local communities or for exporting around the world, increasing economic growth and prosperity. Start with what you can afford. If you can only afford to start growing in some soil with pots you know, in your house, do that. If you can afford a tower, start there and start growing the things you love to eat. Let food be medicine and let medicine be food. You are what you eat. 
So we're, we have the knowledge, now what are we going to do with it? Mm -hmm. Are we going to act on it, or are we just keep taking the easiest route? There's something for everyone at Sustainable Earth. For educators, we have games, classroom activities, and teacher awards. For small businesses, we have small business awards, courses, and articles. Feeling competitive? Want to become more sustainable? Get involved with our sustainability challenges. Head on over to sustainable-earth.org and join the movement for a more sustainable earth. Act now, build a better tomorrow.